All right, so first things first, um, before you ever do any kind of cl uh, cleaning or, or disassembling on your nitro engine, you definitely want to make sure and um, clean it on the, on the outside of the engine first. That way when you start breaking, it in, breaking into it, you don't get any kind of uh, you know, dirt or anything inside of it. I mean, I know we're cleaning it, but it's just good practice. You know, you don't, it's a lot easier to work on a clean engine than it is a dirty one. So, um, you know, get your screw, uh, the trash and everything out of your, and if you have any inside your, um, your socket heads or whatever so I mean, heads your cap screws but um, another thing that I recommend doing is getting you some type of caps <clears throat> um, it doesn't really matter as long as they make a you know a good seal um, but what I do first off is I plug I put a cap over the carburetor right there and cap it off and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and the manifold spring I'm going to go ahead and take it off this comes off just like that pull the manifold off pipe off set that aside and I'm going to cap off um, the exhaust exit right here just like so so now the engine's completely sealed again and I'm going to go outside spray it down with either uh, you can use the nitro engine cleaner, which I have some of that, and then also have a brake cleaner. Works well. Um, you don't really want to use. I wouldn't recommend using the engine degreaser from the stores because it actually needs to be washed away. It leaves an oily residue. So I would use something like um, you know something that's not going to leave a residue, like brake cleaner or nitro engine cleaner, something like that. So what I'm going to do is completely soak it all down. Maybe take a toothbrush, hit a few areas that might be stubborn, and. Um, take my air compressor and blow it off real good and then we'll be back to start breaking it down you know another thing that I use also um, I have these two here's what I'm going to be using uh, I don't have any brake cleaner so I'm just going to use this denatured alcohol it works well too um, you can get it from you know your local park or park store or Walmart anywhere like that it usually has it um, I actually use this uh, mix 50/50 with water to clean the exterior of my, um, you know, my cars or trucks whenever I get through running them and then blow them off with a uh, compressed air. And then you also have your, you know, your nitro cleaning spray. You can use that as well. So, just a couple of things that I use. The first thing I'm going to remove here is going to be the carburetor, the two millimeter Allen wrench, and loosen the pinch nut. I have to give it a little bit of a pop to loosen it up. And it should come right out. I'll have that loosened up. Set that to the side. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get the clutch bell and all that off. So it's just an Allen. I mean, it's just a uh, Phillips head screw. I have to hold your flywheel while you break it loose. Get your shims and your screw. Lift it right off. And now you see your uh, you have your clutch shoes, which it's about time to replace this clutch. And if you don't have one of the special tools. <clears throat> If you don't have one of the special tools for clutches, um, you can use a, a, a flathead screwdriver. It's not the easiest way to do it, but it does work. And what you're going to want to do is get up under the shoe and just pry it up, straight up. And it popped right off. Get your spring. Get your spring and then your shoe. Just repeat the process all the way around. Now for the fun part. <clears throat> to remove this nut right here, you're going to want to either have something to 
some people grip the flywheel or you can find something soft like something plastic or um, I would use something plastic if you can find something plastic sometimes you can put it right down inside the the crank you can rotate your crank over into your uh, opening opens up right here stick something soft like a, a toothbrush handle or something down inside there to lock up the, the flywheel and then you can you know you can bust your nut loose after that um, they actually make a tool a crank locking tool that goes on your back plate uh, it goes on the back side of your engine and it'll lock your crank to where you can remove this I don't have one so I'm gonna have to do uh, the other method that I was just telling you about probably end up sticking something down in here to lock it up or I may try just holding it first and seeing if I can break it loose and if I can't using that I don't really like to use channel locks on this right on these right here because if it slips then you're gonna mess your uh, you're going to mess your splines up on the side and then you're going to have trouble with your starter box gripping it so you can uh just go with your own discretion on that and uh be back after we get this broken loose all right so i want to take this nut off right here this uh flywheel nut with the groove on it for the clutch <clears throat> and it wasn't even tight it was only finger tight i mean i just i just broke it loose with my fingers and i you know i've had suspicion that this flywheel's been turning on me some and uh, my clutch has been tightening up. The bell hasn't been rotating freely. It's wanting to bind on me at times. And my suspicion is probably now because of this nut wasn't very tight and it was allowing that clutch, uh, the flywheel, to, to push out ever so slightly and cause the, flywheel, uh, the clutch bell to bind. So if you're running this engine, I would definitely suggest taking it off, checking this nut from the factory if you haven't ever had it off and make sure it's tight. Um, moving on to the flywheel next. You're going to want to put it down onto the table, take something soft, and pop it loose just like so. Then you're going to have your, your lock and collet, your tapered lock collet behind it, which see it's not even really that tight. So pull that off, and then you have your entire clutch system pulled off. Now we'll be ready to move on to the back plate. This one here has um, <clears throat> has a pull start on it. We're going to take the screws out for that. Pull it off. Move this out of the way. This is a different type. Um, this is a new type of. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, pull start that Kyosho has it actually doesn't even have a one-way bearing so you don't have to worry about that this is just a it's just the actual reel and it goes to a uh, a little like collar in here that actually rotates and whenever you pull the crank the engine I don't know how to really explain how it works. It works on moving in and out like this. It engages and disengages completely when the engine starts, so there's no moving parts other than this back here. So anyway, you're gonna go ahead and pull, pull that little collar off right there. And then there's a little pin right back here. You're gonna pull that out. Make sure you don't lose that stuff for sure. And then you got four Phillips head screws in the back plate here and also just like I said keep in mind as you're <clears throat> as you're disassembling the engine just you know keep a lookout for any abnormal wear anything and once you get them all out though then you can do a good you know close inspection on it Alright, so here's your back plate, there's your inside, your crank, conrod, and here's your uh, crank, uh, this is what you know, engages your, the rod for your piston rod right there, your connecting rod, this is what engages that to, you know, spin the engine when you pull the pull start, if your engine doesn't have a pull start then you won't have this. You know, I set that aside. Next, we're going to take the head off. The head is held on by four two and a half 
millimeter, 2.5 millimeter Allen screws, socket head cap screws. Bust all four of those off. And this right off. Set that aside. Here's your button head. Your glow plug. Set that aside. And here's your sleeve piston. Um, let's see if I can get the sleeve out fairly easily. And pull the sleeve right out. Still looks pretty good. Um, the other day I had it out and I did some light polish work on it on the on the bottom edge here. Didn't do any kind of porting or anything. I just polished it up and rounded this off. I noticed I was gonna. I took it off to inspect it to see how it was doing and what it looked like, you know, after breaking and all that. And um, I did a little bit of uh, rounding off on this bottom edge. It wasn't very smooth, so I went ahead and did that. All right, next your piston. What you're gonna want to do is rotate your crank. So it's at top dead center, your piston's at top dead center, and then you just need a little small flathead screwdriver, and it'll just pop right off just like that. And out comes your piston, connecting rod. you would think that connecting rod would be uh, have a knifed edge but it doesn't that's definitely a mod I can do to this engine very lightly uh, you know knife the edge of this if I choose to do so all right next is your crank which is just going to simply push out the back right here just like so See the end is scalloped and it's been milled out for weight, better weight, or their weight reduction, I guess you'd say. And it looks like this, yeah it is. It's actually a, a two-piece that's been pressed in. But for all practical purposes, all you have left now is your inner bearing, your rear inner bearing, and your front your front bearing. And there's your little space for there too for your um, flywheel. I want to keep that. Um, what you're going to want to do with these is just you know test them by hand, see if they feel gritty. You know if they feel like they've got sand in them or anything, that sandy type feeling. They'll feel gritty when you rotate them. Um, and the inside one as well. Just stick your finger in there and you know turn it and see if it feels nice and smooth, which these do. They feel just fine. And um, what I'm going to do from here on out is clean the insides with either denatured alcohol or your brake cleaner. Um, I don't really want to do. I don't do it like to do a lot of scrubbing in here with anything like a toothbrush because I don't want to get any uh, bristle bits in there. So I'll just give it a good liberal spray in with all that stuff a couple of times and I'll blow it out really 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 well with compressed air make sure it's good and dry first then I'll follow up um, before I reassemble it I'll make sure to use um, either some after run oil on these bearings right here or something like marble mystery oil uh, if you have WD-40 that'll work you just want to make sure that you lube this bearing up really well um, and all your internals before you put it back together make sure that you uh, you know lube them back up before you put them back in and start it back up because you don't want to start it up dry that's for sure and do some damage to it that way um, but basically um, with all your components out what you're going to want to do is uh, just do a quick and you know nice and thorough inspection on all your on your components 
make sure there's no damage or any signs of wear on them other than normal wear like obviously your piston's going to wear and you know your sleeve is going to wear but it's just it looks good that looks like it's wearing very well um, that's about normal looking top of it um, if you choose you can clean this up it's not hurting anything being you know stained like this but if you get into uh, doing any kind of rubbing on it if you happen to roll one of them corners on accident then you've messed up be very careful not to ding this piston uh, if you ding it then there goes your end your you know your is your pistons just gone basically if you ding it you're gonna lose compression uh, you know if it's got a little ding it's gonna allow air to go up through through it and you're gonna lose your compression so just be very careful with it one thing I will show you guys um, <clears throat> on the front bearing here there's a little this, this these are sealed bearings if you take a small, real small flathead screwdriver, you can actually, this little black part, you can actually get right up under the lip on the outside here and just pop it off. And that's the inside, you know, the inside of the bearing. <clears throat> that's a, like a dust cover, the part that seals the bearing off. And if you want these bearings to last longer, uh, you can pop that off and, you know, spray it down with your cleaner, blow it out real good with compressed air, make sure it's nice and clean and dry. And what I do is I take my fingertip and, uh, just use some, you know, multi-purpose grease, uh, and I put a little bit on my finger, <clears throat> and I just take my fingertip right here, and I just, you know, put it around the the whole entire circumference of of the bearing there, and then I take my finger and I'll mash it, you know, pack it down in there real good, and then work it some, and then I'll do it, you know, reapply it again, and then I'll do it again and wipe off the excess and then right before I put the cap back on it I'll do I'll, I'll load it up with grease around the outside of it and I'll press the cap onto it to press the grease in there and then work it in real good and then you know after you do that you can tell that it's very well greased because these are supposed to have grease in them and it'll uh it'll definitely give you a longer life out of them for sure to keep them well greased so just wanted to throw that little tip in there as well <clears throat> But always just make sure, whatever you do, make sure that you uh, re-oil that bearing before you start that engine up. Can't stress that enough. Um, I just use what I use on mine to, you know, to grease or to oil it up before I start it back up. I just use the after run oil. I mean, you can use different things. You know, I've got a several different types of oil, but I just use the after run oil. It works great. Never had any problems with it. So. Anyways, I guess that about wraps it up. I'm not going to do, uh, for time purposes, it takes me forever to get these videos uploaded, so I'm not going to do the reassembly of it. Um, I may do another video in the future of that, but I guess we're just going to do a disassembly for this because this video is going to be long enough as is. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you got any questions, uh, please comment in the section below. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.